Okay, so look, we're starting similarity. Similarity, this entire test, this is why I separated from the dilations because of all the absences, because you need this so that trig is like super easy, okay? Because the colors, the setup, <laughs> um, it's how I'll teach trig. So if you guys get comfortable with me with the markers, the fractions, the cross product property, when I teach trig, you guys are comfortable with it and then you know how to use the calculators. Look, your cell phones are great calculators. I love it. However, you cannot use your cell phone on the, on the quizzes or the test. So you better know how to use these. And when you guys are on the test or quiz, I'm not gonna show you how to use the calculators because it's quick. So it's like if I help you, I'm kind of giving you the answer, okay? Okay, so look, as far as similarity, this is really what you have to understand. This triangle, J, K, F, similar, triangle PQR is called a similarity statement. This gives you everything you need to know. You don't need a diagram. They could just give you the given and you should be able to tell me everything there is to know about the sides and the angles and the scale factor, everything. Okay, so that's what we're gonna cover today with this entire sheet. All right, so look, I'm gonna pull um, this to the side and I'll write big here and use markers just because once I start color coding and writing here, it gets really busy and squishy. Okay, so look, here's my rewritten similarity statement. Okay, look, it's kind of like your name, and some of you might have multiple names, but first name, middle name, middle name, last name. Okay, you guys, if you're filling out an application, if it went last, middle, initial, first, you don't get confused. You know exactly which is your first, which is your middle, which is your last. This similarity statement is like a first, middle, last name. First, middle, last name. The order matters. Okay, but to simplify it, because we're so good with numbers, one, two, three, one, two, three. J is the first letter or vertice. K is the second letter or the second vertice. F is the third, same. P is the first, Q is the second, R is the third. Okay, so I'll come over here and still write one, two, three. But it's crowded, okay. Okay, so with that being said, this tells you your congruent angles and it gives you your similar corresponding sides. So if I'm looking at the first part and it says write the corresponding congruent angles, the ones go together, the twos go together, and the threes go together. The order matters. Put away the phone. Okay, so first angle is J and P. So angle J is congruent to angle P. The second are congruent. K is congruent to Q. Oh, that looks ugly. And then the thirds are together, F, R. Okay, so now I want you guys to tell me the measure of the angles. So you're gonna have to look here and see what they're giving you. Okay, so I want all of these. So I'm just gonna set it up. And M means measure of, right? Measure of angle. F or K or J. Okay, now, this should look familiar to you. However, we have, you guys might have done this over quarantine school. 
So if it looks familiar, great. But if you're like, I'm a little shaky on it, it's okay. I think you guys were probably around quarantine around this time. And geometry is a little difficult to learn over a screen because it's a spatial map. Okay, so I want to know what those six degrees are to those angles. So look at what's given to you. Now, angles have little degrees. It's that little bubble symbol, right? So if I look, I see a 65 degrees with J, right? So J is 65 degrees, correct? Right? Because it's there, J, 65. Okay, so if... J and P are congruent corresponding angles because they're both in the first placement. What's the degree of P? What is it? Yeah, 65 degrees. Yeah. Okay, if I look for K, K has nothing, Q has nothing, so let me go to F. F has nothing, and R has 47. So the next given is angle R is 47 degrees because it's right here, right? But again, if I have angle R, the measure of angle R, I should have the measure of angle F, right? So what's the measure of angle F if they're congruent? 47. 47. And then I'm just going to write something off to the side here. And again, this is, I think you, got, you guys know this already, but again, you were probably on quarantine when you learned this or when you practiced it a whole bunch. All right, triangle sum theorem. Do you remember that? All the angles, and there's only three in a triangle, right? It's 180. Okay, so if I, because again, this is a little busy. Okay, so this is J and K and F, and this is 65 degrees, and F is 47 degrees. And this is P, R, Q, 47, F and R, 47, and P is 65 degrees, okay? So all I did was fill in these four, okay? All right, I'll eventually write it in here just so it's nice and big for you guys. Okay, if all triangles add up to 180 degrees, right, I can easily find measure K, by adding these up and subtracting it from 180, right? Or you could take 180 and go minus, minus, and get that. Same here, right? Okay, so triangle sum theorem says all three angles must be 180 degrees. So 65 plus 47 is 112. What do you get? Huh? 68, perfect. And so you get 68 degrees, and that's what F and Q are. Not F and Q. K and Q are then 68 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in here. So whatever I have labeled here, I'm going to put it here. It's just, it's really tiny. And then I'm going to put my 68 here. And just see if that makes sense to you. So here's your worksheet, but here I wrote it big so you guys can see. So far so good? Easy, right? It's Okay, let me stop the video, save it, and then I'll continue it for the next part because otherwise it's going to be a really long but it's gonna clear out, you guys know that, right?